Good evening and you're very welcome as you join us once again for a time of nightly online community prayer. Today, if you hadn't realised, is Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent. And tonight is the first episode of our second series together, continuing a journey through the book of Psalms. When we concluded our first series at the end of June last year, we reached Psalm 50, which means that tonight we will be looking at Psalm 51. So if you have a Bible, you might want to turn to that now. We'll be following roughly the same format as we did last time. Each night at 7 p.m. throughout Lent, we're going to read a whole or part of a psalm. We're going to reflect together on what it might mean, and then we'll use what we've read to help us pray for God's blessing on our broken world. And if I may, I'd like to say uh, something a little bit personal uh, in this first episode. As I've prayed about our taking the time to have these nightly gatherings again over the next six weeks, I've come to the conclusion that it's no coincidence that we'll be praying together each night for our community and our nation at this particular time in our lives. Some very significant decisions that will affect the lives of all of us are likely to be taken by our Northern Ireland executive and our UK government in the coming days. Decisions about when to reopen schools, shops, restaurants, bars and theatres, and yes, even church buildings. And whilst the daily COVID death rate is now coming down, that's good news to hear in the last couple of days, it's still extremely high. And whilst right decisions by government in terms of easing restrictions can take us forward, wrong decisions could take us backward. And none of us want that. But I genuinely believe that our prayers in Jesus' name can and will make a difference to our leaders and our nation, whether they'll be aware of it or not. Individually um, and of our own strength, we not, may not be able to change the world, but we are the children of our Heavenly Father, and He most certainly can. And amazing as it may seem, He listens to and responds to our prayers. We're going to begin uh, each night, uh, as we did last series, by lighting a candle. And if you have one uh, at home, then you can light yours too. So let's begin this evening. We light this candle as a symbol of light in the darkness, of Jesus, the light of the world and our living hope, a visible reminder that he, by his spirit, is with us now. As I enter prayer now, I pause to be still, to breathe slowly, to recenter my scattered and anxious thoughts upon the presence of God. Dear Father, as I offer myself to you for these moments tonight, and indeed for this season of Lent, Help me to turn away from my own small, self-centred view of the world and to see your view of me and of your world. I invite you in this time to reshape my soul and help me to respond to the world and the people around me with your compassion. Amen. Lent is a distinctive season of the Christian calendar, with a specific focus on encouraging us to ensure that we have an unblemished relationship with God. Uh, it may lead us to repentance and laying some bad things down, or it may lead us to renewed commitment in taking some good things up. The 40 days of Lent mirror the 40 days Jesus spent focused on God to prepare for his ministry, 
days he uh, spent in the wilderness fasting from food so that he could feed on prayer with his heavenly father. The early church used these days before Easter when they would baptise new converts to prepare them through daily teaching and preparation. Tonight's psalm. Uh, let's turn to it. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I've got my iPad, uh, but you may have a, a paper Bible. Take whatever uh, you have. Uh, tonight's psalm uh, couldn't be a better one to begin the season of Lent. It's written by David, or should I say King David? Now, with many of his psalms uh, or prayer songs, it's not easy to tell whether he wrote them in the years when he was a young shepherd or a rebel military leader, as opposed to when he was king. But this one we can be certain of. David wrote this prayer song when he was at the height of his power and influence as the undisputed king of a united Israel. Power and influence that awfully corrupted him, as these things corrupt so many leaders. He had gotten lazy in his prayer life. He had lusted after another man's wife, Bathsheba, the wife of one of his own special forces soldiers called Uriah. And because he'd stopped listening to God, he gave in to temptation. Whilst Uriah was away fighting for David and the kingdom uh, on the front lines, David bedded Uriah's wife and made her pregnant and then pursued a disastrous attempt to conceal his evil deed by having Uriah killed. All because he was king, and all because he could. It was to be an incident that marred the rest of David's life and those around him. And the consequences would have been even worse, but for one thing. David repented. When he was bravely confronted with his sin by a spiritual advisor and trusted friend called Nathan, he didn't try to justify or deny his abhorrent behaviour. He confessed, repented and showed contrition. And this psalm that we're about to read is David's written record of repentance, of seeking God's forgiveness. It has a lot to teach us. Whilst we may not have the position or influence of a national leader like King David, nor sin maybe in the way he did, we all will mess up and our sins will affect others. And you know, that's so much easier to, to do uh, when we have stopped listening to God um, or aren't listening to him and start to do things because they feel good and not because they actually are. When David realised that what he had done due to the consequences of his ignoring God uh, was, so, was so dire, he cried out for God's forgiveness. And then he cried out for God's rescue and repair. Now, if we are a Christian, then when we sin, we do not lose our salvation. But we may, as David did, lose the joy of our salvation. David demonstrates that despite what he has done, he does not want to be defeated by sin again. He wants a fresh start. And all this starts with a broken and contrite heart. And you can be absolutely certain that if you come to God in this way, you will not be rejected. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. David goes on to pray that his repentance will lead to repair and restoration, not just personally in his own life, but for others around him, his city and his nation. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem, he prays. Again, the consequences of our own good or bad decisions or our repentance may not have national ramifications, but all our actions have consequences. And when we, and we can pray too, that an outworking of our repentance, if it's needed, will result in the blessing of others around us. Anyway, let's now read together David's psalm. Let's read it carefully and thoughtfully. You can follow 
as I read. And as we hear these words, let's reflect on our own relationship with God as we do so. We'll pause for silence at the end before we pray together. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, you who are God my Saviour, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous, in burnt offerings offered whole. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. We may think that no one will know and no one will get hurt if we secretly transgress. But none of our thoughts, words or deeds are hidden from God. And any sin will always hurt our Father's heart. God, I am so aware that when the world looks at the church, they see our darkness, our failures, our frailties and our faults. Show us where we grieve you and Lord have mercy. God, would you shine your light on your church? Would you shine your light on me? Would you expose our deeds of darkness and help us to repent and to love the light? Restore to me the joy of your salvation 
and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, so that sinners will turn back to you. We have no right to teach or tell others what to do, unless we are teachable and prepared to be corrected. God, we would pray for our national leaders, our Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his cabinet held to account by Parliament, for our First Minister Arlene Foster, Deputy First Minister Michelle O'Neill and their executive held to account by the Assembly. Grant them all, Lord, teachable spirits, the willingness to learn from mistakes and repent so that they may lead, guide and govern with integrity. Show us how to pray for them in the coming days of crucial decision making that will affect all of our lives. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. God, I pray for those around me, especially those whose lives are defined by loss, the loss of a spouse or a partner, the loss of employment, the loss of mobility, youth or health, the loss of hope. May it please you to prosper them, to build them up, Show me those individuals around me to whom I can make a difference by the giving of my attention, my time, my finances, or even my prayer. Amen. Now let's join together in the words of this prayer for our nation and those around us. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Please tell your friends about this opportunity to join in evening prayer and tune in again at 7pm tomorrow night. For now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>